So that feeds nicely into the first pillar of self that I want to talk about, which is self-compassion. Again, this is something that I've spoken at great length about, not only on the podcast, but in pretty much all of my programs, because it's completely essential in my mind to the effectiveness of any of this work, that we are turning towards ourselves with self-compassion and curiosity rather than blaming ourselves, shaming ourselves, um, having a rigid mindset that tells us that we need to urgently fix and change something. So self-compassion is not about coddling ourselves. And I think that's a really important distinction because some people might have an aversion to the idea of self-compassion on the basis of you know, it seeming like we're just removing any accountability or self-responsibility. Uh, we're giving ourselves a bit of a free pass to you know, behave however we want to because we're in pain or we're hurt. And I think particularly people can struggle with this in the context of giving compassion to others, you know, of approaching others with compassion, compassion and curiosity when you've been hurt by them. But it's so important to understand that the compassion is not mutually exclusive with responsibility and certainly not in the way that I'm talking about it or the way that I teach it. I think that balancing self-compassion with self-responsibility is paramount uh, and a really important part of actually making change. Um, but I think as a first step, we need to, rather than spinning around in the stories of why am I like this? What's wrong with me? Why is it so easy for everyone else and so hard for me? Actually going, okay, what what's this really about for me? Why does this thing feel scary? Where does that come from? And approaching ourselves with the starting assumption that our experience makes sense and it being our job to figure out why it makes sense. Where does this come from? What do I need? Uh, because you know, all of our experiences, all of our patterns, all of our fears, they don't just spontaneously arise in a vacuum. They are the sum of our experiences. Uh, and I think when we really realize that and appreciate that, we can see that it's really a matter of cause and effect um, rather than something very opaque and mysterious and dumbfounding um, that doesn't make any sense and that we need to just try and eradicate. And the more that we can have this mindset and perspective of seeking to understand ourselves from a place of curiosity uh, and from this starting assumption that everything we're struggling with probably makes sense on one level or another, then we can start to actually befriend those parts of ourselves that are afraid or that have these patterns or that drive us to behaviors that we maybe don't like uh, and we can go okay like what purpose is this serving how is it trying to keep me safe uh, and what do I need what else could I do maybe to offer myself a sense of safety or a sense of security or a sense of whatever else I'm needing as such that this extreme behavior or this extreme emotional response doesn't feel so needed anymore so when we start to kind of zoom out and look at those things in a more spacious way rather than with this clinging, gripping, rigid, fear-based mentality of needing to solve our uncomfortable experiences and emotions, uh, then all of a sudden a lot of space is freed up for us to actually start shifting things. Um, but on a foundation of you know, a kind of a collaborative internal relationship between us and all of those different parts and pieces that we are you know, comprised of. So self-compassion is absolutely essential to any of this work. Um, and the more that you try and solve your anxiety or solve your fear in the sense of making it go away and making yourself wrong for feeling it, I promise you that it won't work and that it will actually make things worse. It's like pouring more fuel on the fire rather than, you know, gently approaching that fire and going, oh, okay, what's going on here and, and what do I need? Um, so self-compassion is a must in any positive relationship with yourself rather than beating yourself up, rather than shaming yourself. Try leading with compassion and curiosity. And as a side note, the more we do that to ourselves, the more we can offer that to ourselves, the greater our capacity to naturally offer that to others. Uh, because we're less likely to project that same you know, rigid expectation or you know, unrealistic, the less likely we are to project those same you know, harsh, rigid standards onto other people of perfectionism of, well, you should just be better or do better or try harder uh, and you know, not having a lot of 
time or patience for the things that people are struggling with. Uh, so I think there's a really positive ripple effect there.